Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Local Chat. I'm your host, Will Crosby, and here with me today are people who want to talk about video games. That's right, folks. He's uglier on the inside than he is on the outside. It's Ian Gibson. Sorry, but I just realized that uh, our guest video on my side is frozen. It's okay on the stream, but he's just he's just doing this this like extreme <laughs> shocked face, like shell shock slash embarrassment face. Anyways, <laughs> kick it over to the guest. It's it's great. Uh, uh, Stu Hi. Kimball joining us. Hello, everybody. I'm not shell shocked. I am very happy to be here. I swear. Um, and it, this is gonna be so much fun. I'm so excited. Yeah, that, we have a sniper trained on him from outside his window. So if he tries to leave, he will get shot. But uh, that's okay. I'll like Morse code something. I'll tap something <laughs> yeah. out on the mic. No, you blink your eyelids or you write love you on your eyelids. <laughs> hey, then... I like that. It's <laughs> backwards because um, you, over, you overthought it. So you wrote it backwards, backwards. But now it shows backwards. <laughs> there we go. I like that. Such if I ever meet show. Harrison Ford, I'm going to do that too. I'm going to do yeah. that too. Yeah, I'm sure he'll love that. Um, <laughs> folks, we're here to talk about video games and all things video games. But before we do that, in my notes here, there's a little section called chit chat, uh, which is a thing people do. I've heard, so we're gonna try doing it here. Um, listen, a couple weeks ago, Ian had a fantastic, fantastic New Year's resolution uh, to watch all of hundred movies on the shitty AFI best so sight and sound. No, I'm kidding. The sight and sound list is it AFI? What is it? It's yeah, yeah. BFI. It's oh, the BFI. sight and sound list from the British Film Institute. The British. It's not America's ho funniest home videos, <laughs> um, <laughs> which is not AFI. <laughs> I <know they're> v. <laughs> Wait, why isn't it AFHV? They just get rid of home. Oh, America's funniest really... videos. America's funniest but videos. They say home. I have no idea. That's the biggest We're mystery. The yeah, <laughs> biggest right now I'm gonna we're gonna figure this out. Yeah. Talk to Tom Bergeron or whoever is hosting it now, and <laughs> I'm saying on the phone. Oh shit! <laughs> they took him oh, out. Crap! I'm so close. <laughs> <laughs> they took him out. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh my god! He knows the truth. He's an <laughs> AFV truther. <laughs> Uh, can, oh, can, Ian's can, never gonna swallow. <laughs> I will say, wasn't the circumstances of his death weird? Didn't he like die by banging his head on his headboard? But he was no, alone in his hotel. It's not Billy Mays. <laughs> oh God, yeah. Oh my I God, he did. I think he just no, but he did die in a hotel room alone. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna look it up. Did yeah, he? He up. like literally bump his head and never get up in the morning like the nursery rhyme. <laughs> I think so. Who killed Bob Dang. Saget? <laughs> he, he accidentally uh accidentally hit the back of his head on something thought nothing of it and went to sleep yeah don't see you can't say that to me because for the rest of my life i will hit my head on something and be like i'm about to i'm gonna bob sag it in a second here do oh, you think it was uh do you think it was a camcorder <laughs> like that's pretty good you take out bob Saget with a camcorder Oh my god. That the ult yeah, no. Oh my god. Okay, all right, let's move oh. on from the AFV okay. truther bit. I think <laughs> it's from the AFV truthers. Um no, so I liked your sight and sound list. Uh you were trying to you're gonna watch a movie once a week or you're just gonna do the whole list within the year? I, I'm trying to do the one hundred list over the year. Okay. Hopefully. So I was like, uh, I wish I had something cool like that. And I can't do movies because um I can't steal your thing. And I can't do um, no, I can't do movies because of that. So what I thought was I should play more older video games. I gush about older video games, but I rarely take the time to play older video games because honestly, it's a hassle sometimes and you just want to play the modern Rudy 2D shooties. So what I do own is this giant tome called a thousand and one games to play before you die, oh, wow. which is is the latest entry is Bioshock Infinite in the year of our Lord 2013, which is good <laughs> in this case because I don't want to get many modern video games. Right. So my goal is to, on every, maybe every local chat, or I might just do it on Thursdays during local chat, is to draw a new game, and then I can report back on it in the next week's episode. Nice. So every week That's I'm drawing idea. a game. I, I can't I like say that. I'm going to play a game every week, uh, or complete a game every week, because obviously... Yeah. It's impossible, but this way I can play more games and go through it. 
So from you gentlemen, um, you can discuss this together. I need a number between oh. 22 and let's say I played Far Cry 3 and 949. Let's, uh, um, 949 being obviously closer to 2013. Right. 22 being closer to 1970, I believe. Oh, wow. Let's, uh, let's combine it. So, Stu, you pick a one or two digit number, and then I'll pick a one or two digit number, and that will slam that together to make it. Oh, that. perfect. Okay. Yeah, so go ahead and pick, pick the number. Okay, I got mine. 42. Okay. Three. So, 423. 423. 423. Oh, it's gonna be some awful. It's gonna be like Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> What's the format of this? Is it is it like one page per? It's yeah. one page per, which is very yeah, nice. Nice. Um. Okay, I'm gonna got. I'm gonna have you guys repick. Uh, well, no, I could play this. I, I played the first that? one recently. It's Diablo two. Oh yeah, play it. Diablo two. Can but I play Resurrected or do I have to play original Diablo two? No. Oh my god. I think I think original. Okay. Part okay. of this is gonna be. How much of it holds up and how much of it doesn't in terms of control yes. scheme, graphics, story, progression, etc. I like that. I like that. Okay, I'm going to mark this with a business card. Okay, we got it. Excellent. Ignore Diablo all the other two. marks in there. <laughs> um, Diablo Just 2, speaking of, folks. Speaking of Diablo 2, I realized today that Diablo 4 comes out this year. Are you guys excited for that? Honestly, um, I've never played a Diablo game. So I I will either start with this one or I hear three is okay, pretty good, yeah. Nay, three's great. I like. Okay, three. yeah. I'm okay, not we one gotta... of those people who plays Diablo over and over again, but the one Got time it. through Diablo three is pretty fun. I will okay. also say during the pandemic, during the lockdown, I played Diablo one, which okay. is is meant to do. You're supposed to like play and play and play. Like all hmm. sorts of games from the 80s and 90s where it's your only one game, so you just keep playing it. So what I did, I played until it got really difficult and it was clear I needed to like play more to level up, and I just turned the cheats on, and then nice. I went through the rest of the game with all the cheats on. Hell so yeah. Highly nice. recommend that. Um, I love that. There's the version, <laughs> the Hellfire version on GOG, I think is the like definitive working complete edition. So Sweet. I highly recommend Diablo 1 and 3. I've never played 2 as evidence of about five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> and now we'll get your full... You'll play through the entire thing in the week. Yeah. And no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to get there. The whole series. Perfect. One, yeah, two, yeah, whole yeah series. exactly. Yeah, yeah it was oh Diablo 2 through 5. <laughs> 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 Immortal counts, right? Oh, oh true. I was oh, like, God. 5. Oh, yeah. No, oh, my God. Immortal. Count. Um, okay. Yikes. Next part of the show. The chit chat's over, everybody. So stop chit chatting. Oh. Uh, we're moving on here to the games we have been playing this week. And I'm going to start off with our special guest, Stu. You have quite the list here. I have had a lot of time on my hands. So I, uh, <laughs> I've been playing a lot of games. I got to finish Hi Fi Rush, which is a fantastic experience. Start to end. Like, we need. I've been, I've been in this. I've been playing like. Oh, I forgot to add it, but Deadly Premonition and uh, games from the 360 era B kind of budget games that are like small, short, but sweet. And Hi-Fi Rush feels the exact same way. It's like, mm. oh, it's so good. And it's so short. And I love that it's so short because I'm also playing The Witcher 3, which is so <laughs> long <laughs> and massive and amazing, but also just the scale is so huge and daunting at times. Um, but I actually, I started the witcher when it came out the f the first time on ps4 and it was supposed to be this like definitive experience and i loaded in and it was kind of janky and so slow in that first hour or so and i was like i'm good and i put it away and <laughs> have now spent like 20 hours in the first little area that you're in because uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm the the hooks are in and i am i am good to go so i'm loving my experience with it so those are the two biggest ones that I played. Uh, I've been playing this weird game on my Steam Deck called Racing Lagoon, which is a PS1 game uh, from 1999. It is a Square Enix developed, or Squaresoft developed, uh, racing RPG. 
fuck and this is the game what? i've been meaning to play it got like a fan translation a couple years ago right it, yeah i actually i maybe a couple years ago but there's one that came out recently that i was like oh sh mm -hmm. here we go like this is the this is the time it's so good it's initial d the video game basically and what you do is you drive around the city of south yokohama and instead of battles, it'll be other cars that either flash their lights at you or you flash their lights at them. And depending on what side of the road you're on, if you like rear end them or, you know, head on face them and crash into them with your lights on, it'll start a battle, which is a race. Oh, wow. <laughs> and That's incredible. It's, it's so good. And so the so the races will also determine depending on all those factors, it'll determine what racetrack you're on, what location you start on the racetrack cuz there's only like, you know, 10 racetracks or whatever, but you start on either one end or the other. So all the turns will be different depending. And, um, yeah, I think that's all the, the factors that go into deciding, like, the little battles. Oh, my God. I, like, the fact that this has not been remastered or, like, they, they've never made another one is baffling to me because it's so much fun. I, I mean, Highly screw, recommend. Screw Diablo 2. I want to play this. <laughs> <laughs> Racing I'm, Lagoon. Yeah, I'm, I'm so happy because I, I saw a couple of articles about this over the last year or so whenever the fan translation started popping mm -hmm, off. Mm -hmm. And I remember posting it in some pics and saying, hey, maybe we should do a series about this. But there's always that hesitation of this looks cool, but am I going to enjoy it? And is it actually worth it? And hearing you talk about it makes me so excited. In, in fact, so excited that I've got a, I've got a, an international trip coming up in two weeks. And I just realized I can play this on my phone with an 8-bit Doe controller. I can oh. take this with me so easily. Yes, you can. Oh, my God. Oh, my. oh thank you so much. Thank you, Stu. Thank, thank you so much. You're welcome. But it's crazy. Those PS1 discs, you can just shrink them right in, put them right in the phone. <laughs> I <laughs> tape it to the back. I tape oh, and you, you just got to keep it spinning. Oh, got it. Okay. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> you have Maggie do that. <laughs> that would be put hilarious. Put it on a little uh, fidget spinner. Yeah, yeah. Tape it to a fidget spinner. Oh, and then... Perfect, man. Ingenuity yeah. at its finest. Oh, my I God, need yeah. To... I need to set up my Steam Deck to uh, accept PS1 discs. I have yes, that. that's what I did. The and external drive the... is really annoying. Oh, <laughs> I, was about, I was about to say, you could. You probably could plug an external drive into you, that because yeah, it's got the USB-C. <laughs> oh, yeah. I didn't even think about that. Oh, my God. Imagine. Can you imagine if, like, dumping ROMs was illegal, like, and you would have to do that sort of thing technically to be above board? Oh so you'd God. be like, okay, oh, yeah, like I, I don't mean to, I don't mean to take this joke even further, but the only legal way to yeah. do it is to take your PS1 with you, but then have a capture, a USB capture card plugged into yep. the Steam Deck. Oh my <laughs> God! Or like, yeah, an H or USB C converter, weird yeah. something. Yeah, composite <laughs> USB C. Yeah. God. Oh God. God. It's incredible. <laughs> That's um, that's a series that people should do is like the pimp my ride of like the weirdest video game setups you could yeah. possibly get. I would love that. I would watch that. It's like the Game Boy with all the stuff on it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's it's an IP webcam pointed at your home TV and a bunch of Raspberry Pi servos connected to the <laughs> controller. Yeah. Oh God, that would be amazing. I love you, that. Oh, yeah. No, you would have you would have the and you could use the um the. Han the is it handicap to say the ex accessibility controller yes. and have the uh, 3.5 3 millimeter half. jacks for electrical connections to it yes and you use this the game totally boy doable. camera oh oh yeah <laughs> i want to see this happen someone has to do we, one of the three of us has to make yeah, this happen <laughs> is, it's it's 100 doable i think i actually oh yeah most of the shit i was gonna to say it. yeah <laughs> oh god that's so cool that's such a good oh. idea yeah, um, Racing Lagoon. It's fantastic. Oh, wow. <clears throat> that sounds great. Uh, look, Stu, I don't mean to be rude, but... Yeah, yeah. Fuck the rest of your list. Tell me about Sonic Frontiers. I have wanted to play this <laughs> game since it came Go. out. Go! I, I was on GameSpot's, like, you know, editor's spotlight for Sonic Frontiers. I am a Sonic Frontiers yep. champion. I am, yes. I am loving my time with it. So, the best way I described it, as I've described it many times before, is if you combine Shadow of the Colossus... Death Stranding, and Tony Hawk. No, Tony Hawk. 
and, and Sonic. I guess he's in there too. Um, <laughs> but no, it's it's the three of those because you have this kind of bare open world that you're running around in and unlocking different sections of the map or more specifically ways to traverse that open world, which is what I love about it. The, you know, every time you, um, th- there's like little missions around that you, you know, you have to get from point A to point B in a certain amount of time. It unlocks the map, but it also unlocks the grind rails, which will get you Ooh. in the fastest way from point A to point B. And that's where the Tony Hawk comes in because those feel like, these amazing like kinetic you're like going through rings and like the purple rings shoot you forward and you're you're hopping from rail to rail it's so good um and that's so that's the open world portion is like you're doing that and then you fight these massive colossus style robots um that are just around the island there's like a tower version there's like a big beast version that you run up there's one where it creates a path that you like that you uh, dodge the bullets up to the like head of it, and then you like fight it and do all your kung fu moves on it. Um, and so that's the open world section. And then they have the digital zones, which are the they're like they're your classic Sonic stages, two D or three D. Um, and you have like you know complete in a certain amount of time, get all the red rings, like do all the classic Sonic stuff. Ice. And so it's this perfect blend of like, you can take your time and explore. And then if you want to do like a time trial, you jump into the digital zone. And like the first one, I still can't beat. You have to do it in like 55 seconds. And I'm, I'm just underneath. So I'm trying to figure out ways to like, you know, maneuver myself or like, oh, is it faster if I go up here or down here? It's so good. I, I love Sonic Frontiers. Sounds great. It sounds so <laughs> yes. good. Yeah, yeah. I I I I couldn't quite because that game came out right before our extra life, and I kept thinking about getting it for extra life, but I couldn't quite swallow the full price tag. But as soon as that game hits twenty bucks or Game Pass, I'm hopping on that thing immediately because I'm excited exactly to really give it a shot. It. Yes, I completely awesome. agree. You probably should not buy it full price. As much as I love <laughs> it, it's not a seventy dollar game. It is a forty or you know thirty to forty dollar game. And buying at that price, you're going to get exactly what you need. It's so good. Nice. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. But, well, uh, yeah, that's... Go ahead. I, I mean, I, I, you, you played a lot. If anything else you want to discuss, or we can... we can. No, no, please. I have had... I Yeah. Racing Lagoon is the only thing that I need to, like, I, preach so to the masses. <laughs> I'm so going to play so, 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 Stu, that, that brings my, my international eight days trip... The list right now is Racing Lagoon and Fire Emblem Sacred Stones. It's gonna, it's, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be a great trip. Hell we were talking yeah. about Sacred Stones. The the 3DS is the perfect portable console because you can fold it. It doesn't need its own case, and it can just run so much shit on it now. Oh and yes, it can. Preach, Pre- yeah. <laughs> preach. Amen. Just like well, got that Amen. up. Amen. It's uh, so good. Ian, yeah. Ian I, Gibson, I, please tell me about your favorite James Bond game. uh honestly i don't know if it's my favorite because i haven't really played many james bond games which is why it's so interesting that i've been diving into goldeneye uh so goldeneye okay look we talked about this before how it's weird but i think in retrospect it's not weird goldeneye announced for the uh xbox and nintendo switch online pretty much the same day and then it's also came out the same day in retrospect it's probably just rare controlling the announcement of that for both systems. But at the time, it was just bonkers. It felt like a wealth <laughs> of golden eye. You've got it perfectly uh, in all its awful originality, in a way, control scheme and graphics wise, if you want it on the Nintendo Switch or you got it updated on the uh, Xbox. I never really played golden eye growing up because I didn't have an, an N64. And even going to friend's house, we would play maybe one multiplayer match and then we would go to, you know, Mario Kart or something like that. Um, so I was excited to pick this up. I've played three or four missions. Um, and honestly, I, I'm surprised. Okay, wait, so let me ask a question. When did Goldeneye come, come out? Was that 90? 97. I think it's 97. Yeah. So the crazy thing about this is, uh, this isn't to put down Goldeneye in any way, but I, I always thought it was just known for having very good multiplayer 
and people said they'd like the single player as well. But in my head, I was like, okay, it's mid nineties and 64 single player. It's probably here's a map. The map looks cool, but it's just waves of enemies, right? Like mm -hmm. you're just fighting enemies going through, but like, there's so much like dynamic, like mission objectives and different things going on in these maps. Like even in that first map, like one of the objectives was disable the alarms. Admittedly, I had to look it up to be like, what do you mean by that? Because I turned them <laughs> off, but they were like, no, you got to shoot the alarms to destroy them. And I was like, <laughs> that's cool. And then there's like a tapping, like it's like a computer tapping thing you can put on the, the satellite signal. And so um, I'm having fun. I've only played three or four missions and it's fantastic on the 360. I'm having like basically no control problems at all okay. um in terms of like i'm not having to deal with c stick or any weird analog stick n64 controls yeah. it's just the only weird thing is just weapon switching but you get used to that pretty quickly so so i've been enjoying it um i've played through three or four missions so far i'm having fun with it will you've been you've been playing it as well right oh, yeah. yeah you're you're on the series x right yeah you said 360, right, which caught me off guard. Oh, <laughs> oh sorry. I was like, what? I keep saying that uh, because I, I, I don't think this is true. This is not the 360 remaster of the Golden no. Eye, but I guarantee you that's kind of what they built from because there was that leak a couple of years ago where they were like, hey, they were, they were going to put out a 360 remaster of the Golden Eye. Here it is. You know, I, I, I have it on this computer. Or it might be on my server, but it is it is fully playable on oh, wow. an Xbox 360 emulator. It has the yeah. Halo, like change the graphics at will, sort of thing. Nice. And, so uh, cool. Yeah, it's very cool. You can you can find it on the internet. <clears throat> um, so definitely, it's very cool. Um, I I am amazed at how well it controls on the Xbox 360. It they nailed the controls. Like yeah, I played this maybe a year ago. I brought my. Uh, and, or my brother had an N64. I brought up my EverDrive to Utah for Christmas and we played some GoldenEye there and it was still like, you got to turn then hold the button to aim and then move around to aim. But they really right. simplified it now where like, it's just like you hold for iron sights and it does the aiming and it's because the sticks are way more accurate now. You can be way more precise with it. You can hit enemies cool. from super far away. Um, it just... It is now not that hard of a game because you have movement options. It was so much before the game was hard because you go to shoot the guy and you completely miss or you're looking around all this sort of stuff. So it's I, I played two missions. I, I did the damn mission, the damn mission. And then I did the <laughs> um, I think I did the one mission after it. And those just played. Yeah, the, the one where you have to go talk to Sean Bean, who whose face looks like he was put in the oven for too long. <laughs> it um, looks like an actual baked. bean. Yeah, yeah, yeah a baked, baked bean. Model. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's great. Baked bean. It's really funny. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so it just it came together so well, and it's it's sad that the the I mean, it's nice that the Switch version is faithful to the original, all that sort of stuff. But it's it's nice that this has been updated. So when someone new picks it up, they're not like, ah, oh, piece of shit, garbage. Immediately, they can like, I, I I've preached this a lot, but I think the biggest hurdle with older games is controls. Um, like mm -hmm. there are plenty yep. of amazing quality games from the nineties and early two thousands that if the controls or the UI system or the anything part of that weren't there, if they were modernized, they would be incredible. Um, and, I, and so many things have shown that. And especially in this case, I think the, the, the fact that it works so well as anyone like you, Ian could just pick it up and play. And it works out well, so uh, yeah, I have great. been enjoying it. What else have you been playing, Ian? Yeah. Well, I, there's so many games out right now. There's High Five Rush. There's games from last year. There's all sorts of games hitting Game Pass, etc. Uh, so of course I've been playing more Dwarf Fortress. Um, <laughs> I so I went on a bit of a, a Dwarf Fortress hiatus after it came out. Dwarf Fortress Steam because I around Christmas I decided to build a new PC and then it took me and I I, I took my door fortress save and I, I kind of put it on a shelf aka USB drive <laughs> and I said I'm not going to touch you until I get the new computer set up and then I just went through uh like five weeks of uh new hardware parts nightmares and I finally have the new PC set up and so of course I installed door fortress um and I put the save back and uh I've been having some fun I I think Dwarf Fortress Steam 
it's removed a lot of those barriers. We've talked about it before. It's removed a lot of those barriers of not having to stare at ASCII art and having to like not having a mouse and having to navigate menus via uh, uh, keyboard shortcuts. Oh. Um, but um, there is still a little bit of a learning curve because as as we had, we had a we have a stream series called Dwarf Boys where we play Dwarf Fortress. And uh, at the end of episode two, everybody in our fortress died of dehydration because we didn't get a well up in time and winter came and it just completely dried up the stream outside. So um, so it it is I I don't want to say it's an unforgiving game because there are games that are harder and are more of an asshole towards you. But this game is definitely like you need food, you need water. Don't drop a drawbridge on people, which I did today. Um, and it, it doesn't make it easy. It doesn't necessarily say those things explicitly, and it doesn't make it easy how to remedy those situations before they occur. That's not a fault of the game. It's just something that makes the game daunting. But I'm, I'm finally over a hurdle now where I'm just like, you know what? I'm having fun with this game, and I've been watching some tutorials online. And the tutorials help, but they're also giving me ideas because even when the tutorial, the guy's like, here's how to do a farm. And I'm like, forget your farm. Is that a freaking magma forge? Is that a lava <laughs> river you have? You, you have you have a wall. You have a double wall around your entire fortress. And I'm like, hell yeah, I need to start building that. Um, so I've been having a lot of fun. It's it's funny. My my first main fortress, I had to abandon it because I got up to 130 dwarfs. 55 of them were entertainers whose sole purpose was to hang out in the tavern and sing songs and dance because they literally just kept showing up like five a day at the door being like, I want to join your fortress as an entertainer. And of course, I always said yes. And um, I was still having fun with that. But that save got so big that it just started crashing every 10 minutes. Um, So I put that on the shelf and I started a new fortress and I'm having a lot of fun with it. I was talking to Will about this. Um, Dwarf Fortress is definitely one of those games where you don't really it's not that you don't get attached to a fortress but pretty much as soon as you start a new fortress you go I can't wait to start my next one because I'm going to do things differently yeah. I'm yep. going to redesign yep. so like like one example I used to do um, three by three bedrooms because I was like I want them to have a nice bedroom and I want it to be spacious and then I looked it up and and some of that does matter some of that will make your dwarf mm-hmm. happier or not and I looked some stuff up and I didn't min max it, but people were like, they don't really care about space. It's more about like the quality and and like smoothing the floor. So now I do okay. one by four bedrooms where it's literally it's literally just a corridor. It's like a dead end corridor. There's a <laughs> door, there's a chest, there's a bed and there's a cabinet. But the floors are smooth and the walls are smooth. I love that. And they they love it, too. It's great. The <laughs> only thing is, look, I have a confession to make, which is that it, so instead of doing three by three rooms, I'm doing one by four rooms, so I can fit a lot of them closer together. And the whole thing about, I don't want to say the whole thing, but a key thing about Dwarf Fortress is you, it costs them almost nothing to go up and down stairs, but it costs them a decent amount to move horizontally across a level. So you kind of want to minimize the amount of horizontal travel they do and maximize vertical travel. Um, Otherwise, it's just going to take them too long to get places and they're going to be like, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, etc. So I was like packing these rooms in and I had a really good design where it was like I want to say it was like 30 by 30 squares. And I had like, I want to say 60 bedrooms in there. And I was like, this is great. And then I zoomed out and uh, Maggie came in and she's like, why does that look like a swastika? And I was like, oh, my God, you're no. right. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, it was God. It's, I, can't, I, I can't tear it down, though. It's just like the perfect like everybody is like 12 squares or less from the staircase to their bedroom door. And it's perfect. It just happens to look like the third Reich emblem. Listen, but you know no. what? In it's any ancient history. Yeah. In any grid based no... game, you always accidentally swastika at least once. <laughs> at least once. <laughs> yeah. We've all been there. It's yeah. part of the, it's part, them's the breaks, you know? But I think, <laughs> I think my, Just overall, like my Dwarf Fortress journey, Dwarf Fortress Steam in particular, has been like, I've got to get up this hump and then I'm going to take a break for a bit. And now I'm going to get up the hump again. And baby, I'm at the top right now. Like I woke up, I've been waking up early every day this week just (laughs) just to play like an hour, hour and a half of Dwarf Fortress before I have to go to work. And then when I left work today, uh, before I left work today, I started playing Dwarf Fortress. And then after I left work, I kept playing Dwarf Fortress and I'm just I'm loving it. This game is incredible and it is absolutely worth 
getting through that hurdle. And the hurdle is not even really that difficult. It's just a matter of sitting down, playing the game and just looking things up when you've got questions. But it's it. it's a, Dwarf Fortress Steam was our number three, two, three, number three, three game of the year for a reason, folks. You guys absolutely got to Got to check it out. I got to check it out. I have not played at all. It sounds like a runner's high. Like you get to that point and you just yeah. like hit the threshold and pass through it. Oh, it sounds so good. It, I've been playing a lot of Valheim. Is it in a similar thing to that, yeah. but more like... Yeah, it's more RimWorld. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think it's, um, it's, it's definitely similar to Valheim. And the reason why I would say is like thinking about games like this where you're building and you don't quite understand, but then you get things working. The thing about Door Fortress that I'm having right now is that I'm looking at it going like, there are still so many systems in this game I just don't understand. Like today, I finally did a drawbridge and I started and I did iron smelting for the first time so that I could make iron spear traps. So now when I pull up the drawbridge, people on the bridge will fall down three flights of stairs and land on three flights of emptiness and, and land on these spears. And it's just like that's one little system. And so it's almost like a tree where it's it's not like 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 Valheim. I feel like you get to a point where you understand things and now you just need right. to grind through it. Right. There are still so many things in this game that I don't understand that I want to try. Like I saw a tutorial on minecarts. I've never touched minecarts, but now I'm like, what if I set up a crazy minecart thing, you know, I to shuttle that. stuff back and forth the base. So it's like, it's like, it's like my eyes are now open to the <laughs> glory of all of Dwarf Fortress's systems. And I get to pick and choose which one I want to play with next. I love that. Oh, that's so that's great. great. I love those it's, type of games that just endlessly expand, like expand in your understanding of them are like yes. the best type of games. I love that. Yeah. 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 It, Dwarf Fortress. Fantastic. Um, <clears throat> incredible game. I, I've been playing it a bunch too. Uh, I, <laughs> one of my dwarves, uh, his relative died. So now he is the Baron of Trasselberg or something. Uh, and, I, or he's the, yeah, no, he's the Baron. And um, now I had to build him Royal Rooms. Uh, which he's very happy with. He's not very, he wants to be extravagant, which I need to look up how to make him be okay with that. I think I have to like give him some nice clothes and stuff like that, yeah. but he's still a hardworking, I think he's a carpenter or woodworker, um, but he'll on a whim, you get these little pops that say, uh, uh, nobility requests item. Uh, and so it'll be like, he wants three earrings. He wants three slept. Uh, this motherfucker. <laughs> Wanted me to start production on earrings. He's like, start producing them, boys. And I'm like, okay, I'll make e earrings for you, you idiot. And um, lo and behold, a couple weeks later, traders on their way. Guess what Mr. Nobility does? Ban on exporting earrings. <laughs> you <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> These are oh all my God. These were for trading. That's great. Oh, I was he yeah, he's just in his himself. swimming pool of earrings. <laughs> yeah. uh, it sounds like a random. nightmare. Not, yeah. Um, so I had that today. Um, I had the elves yell at me because I am cutting down too many trees. So the elf diplomat came to talk to me uh, and said, "This is your only warning to stop cutting down our trees." I'm for military. Build that military. Yeah. App. So I gave him the bird, and uh, I just <laughs> highlighted every tree in the region. Cut down. <laughs> we're gonna burn the forest. The pointy-eared oh bastards. Nice. <laughs> um, absolutely incredible. Uh, I've been playing some other games, but the game I want to talk about because I haven't been able to talk about it for two weeks because we had game of the year last year, last year, last week. It takes two. Is a game I finally played. Um, oh. Yes. Uh, I played it with Karen. We had a blast. Um, I had been avoiding this game because I played, I played Joseph Joseph Far Fares Fares. Oh Far yeah. Far I, yeah. I played his previous <laughs> games, A Way Out and Brothers. Right is the other one, mm -hmm. Brothers, and those yeah. Brothers was very sad. Uh, and then A Way Out was more serious and all this sort of stuff. And so when It Take two, Takes Two was coming out, everyone's like, oh, it's about divorce and all this stuff. And I'm just like, you know, I don't need that in my life. Like, I don't yeah. need, like, a sad game about divorce. And I never looked into it at all because I'm just like, Joseph Ferris plus sad plus divorce, nothing I want to deal with. Folks, I've never been more happy to be wrong in my entire life. It Takes Two is one of the best games I've ever played. It is a magical experience um of co-op uh you have to play it with co-op 
they did the whole thing where if you own the game, your, your friend can play it for free. They just have to download the demo version and join you. Uh, all this sort of stuff. The the crafting that goes into these games, uh, like the worlds they made are just so open. And, like you get to the levels, but there's like hub worlds where you can like run around. My favorite was this uh, giant like clockwork town, medieval clockwork town oh. with a train. And there's like the little wooden nice. carved people going around. Like the milkmaid so comes good. out, pretends to milk and like comes back. So it's all like very yep. realistic uh, to how it would work in the real world, but it's obviously fantasy. Um, so incredible game. The point of me bringing this up is within the game are mini games. And one of those mini games folks is chess. And Karen and I sat at that chess board for three hours playing chess with each other. Folks, chess is a game I've hated for a very long time. Uh, and I've also noticed it is the background of this podcast because it's a windows 3.1 background. Um, Folks, I bought a chess set and we've been playing chess like every night. Um, It's amazing. Yeah, this game got me into chess. um, Oh my God. I'm upset, but I also love it. Um, I bought the US US Chess Federation travel kit, which is what everyone recommends because it's what they use at tournaments. And it's literally like a vinyl thing you lay out. It has the one, two, three, A, B, C, D, and it has the triple weighted uh pieces and you just roll it out you put them out comes in a sweet kick-ass carrying case and it's like here's room for your pieces here's room for your clock which i don't have a clock yet because they're expensive and the clock (laughs) Um, so i have to buy one of those now but um yeah i would like to thank it takes two for inventing chess and for introduce but mostly i liked the chess in that game because you two are running around on the board picking up the pieces and moving them Right. So it didn't feel so it, it felt personal. It didn't feel impersonal where you're just like putting, you're putting the pieces out. It shows you where to move them. It teaches you with a little book that's open to the chess page next to it. Um, you can do a short game, long game or infinite time. So you can just mix it up whenever uh, we had to restart twice. Cause uh, the time ran out once. And then the second time I ran away from the board and it canceled the game and we were oh like God. almost done. Um, oh no. So it's been super fun. Uh, I've really been enjoying playing chess now. I'm a chess guy now. I hate it. And I don't, I just like, you know, I realized it's a puzzle game that the, the, the pieces are moving, you know, like you just got to figure out the puzzle. I've been realizing, I realized that Pokemon's about catching Pokemon. I realized chess (laughs) is about puzzles. I realized today that analyzing videos is about research. There's so many things going on. It's like your discovery for you. Yeah, it's my rebirth day. <laughs> Was I in a plane crash? Man, what an incredible moment! What is um, what is that? Was that was incredible? Good job. That's for everyone oh out there. Oh my god. Um, written in pencil, folks. Uh, moving on here. Uh, we will be <sighs> going to the news, which means I get to play the creepy news theme. Here we go. Mm. News news theme. It's time for the news. It's time for the news, folks. Oh, I have to move away from the mic because people are convinced I do it live, and I don't. (laughs) That is, that is me. I think I pitch shifted me as well. I'm not that high pitched. Um, (laughs) It's incredible. Not right away, Uh, folks. We're here to talk about the news. Uh, Stu, why don't you kick us off here with your little chosen story? Yes, I, uh, like many people, watched the third episode of The Last of Us and was already in love with Nick o- uh, Nick Offerman, right? That's Yes, yeah. that is his name. Um, and even more so, and Murray Bartlett and the whole episode was fantastic. And so to see him talk about video games and say that Banjo-Kazooie was the last game that he played was uh, very validating for me because I also love Banjo-Kazooie. And I, it got me thinking of like what games are there that I would have to swear off games because I just got too head into. um, And and that's what has been constantly spinning. So I know it's a news segment, but I just wanted to ask you guys as well. Mine to start, mine would definitely be Breath of the Wild is like the one that I have spent the most time in. And if I had to swear off video games because I played one too much, it would definitely be Breath of the Wild. 
But I, I, I send it to you. What do you think is your game that you would have to swear off all video games because you played it too much? I, I think for me, it's probably it's probably Factorio because every time you start a new Factorio save, I'm pretty much guaranteed to play that game for at least six hours per day, if not more, yep. until that save is done. Yep. It's just and especially uh, games that are very similar to Factorio, like Dyson Sphere Program or even Dwarf Fortress, where it's just right. like you fall down that hole and you're just like, this is an, it's going to be 100 hours before I finish this save and get to mission complete. So all my time is just to that. So, yeah, that's probably my exactly. my dangerous game. OK, okay. Factorio. Yeah, I am. Um, I'm going to forgo the obvious Factorio Rimworld Dwarf Fortress because I'm already in jail because of those games. But uh, just as far as like, uh, 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 I hesitate to call it regular game, but like a Banjo-Kazooie or a Breath of the Wild. Right. right I right. think like Fallout New Vegas, I yep. like have oh, yeah. 150 hours in that game. Oh, yeah. I just installed it again with mods on my computer. You, mm. Wait, wait, wait a minute. That was like, we have to set the stage here first, too, okay. which is that oh. he's been playing Fallout New Vegas the past two months. And I believe he didn't even like start the story basically until like a month and a half in. Like you just gotta check because I, I I literally checked. I, <laughs> I literally checked for Karen. I think I started my latest run of Fallout New Vegas August like sixth or something like that, and okay. I finished like two weeks ago. <laughs> oh, um, incredible! Yeah. No notes. I love yeah, that. Yeah, it is a fantastic. Uh, relaxing i've i'm drinking or doing other things uh to relax at night and i just found the walking around to be super fun uh and just doing the game uh and yeah then i did the main story in like six hours just to get it right. over with I'm like eh, exactly get over uh, and then i did all the different endings loading back in in like four hours nice, nice. and now the uh the mod that i'm saving for the stream series is uh you'll appreciate this i hope which is a mod that makes every door connect to a new door. So when you Whoa. so when you load the game in, it, so cool. it creates it creates all the doors and what they're connected to. So it's that way for the entire game. So you can learn what's connected to what. But I, I literally oh, was shit. testing it. I stepped outside of Doc's house. Right. Uh, I think his door is the only one that doesn't do it. And right. you step outside and it was like, go to the saloon that's like, 15 feet away and the right. marker for it was 800 feet away oh my god so i wow. like walked over to the the salute or the play the general store next to it went into there it brought me to uh new vegas and then i turned around and all six doors they're double doors sets of two that go to the same place but all right. six of them are now different into the hotel <laughs> so that's like, so cool i love that's that so yeah, it's incredible. Um, I can't wait to to play it more. And there's also another mod that also on top of that randomizes everything. So I like walked outside and Victor, who's a giant robot, was just a oh, ghoul yeah. and was just going. <laughs> and I like click on him and then it has his voice and it's just a ghoul like radioactive I ghoul. Love that. Oh my um, god. That's so I, I I can't wait. I can't wait to. That I'll have door to have one. You on, I'll have to have you on in episodes too, so you can oh, you can see I it would, in all its glory. I would enjoy the hell out of that oh my god yeah it's gonna be fun um uh yeah great piece of news here i saw this today um i just think it's funny um when like famous people talk about video games it's usually always like i played them as a kid or something and this right. was at least a nice twist to it where he played a pretty good game right. and also swore it off after it uh <laughs> i think my favorite tweet was what did he think of nuts and bolts uh, which <laughs> I would love to ask him someday. Oh, God. Him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, somebody needs to. Um, when I saw this, I thought of two things, which is uh, number one, somebody needs to tell him about ukulele or any of the other or yes. even just tiny kin, any of the other very good. Oh, yeah. Banjo Kazooie clones recently. Um, and yep. the other one was that I really want to watch this interview just because I want to hear him pronounce Banjo Kazooie. Like I can't do a good compression, but I need to hear him say that. In Banjo the Kazooie. Voice. Yeah. Banjo. That. Yeah. Banjo. Yeah. <laughs> I love him. God, he's so good. Um, I I'm just going to hit my story quick this week, uh, yes. which is very exciting. Uh, Bay 12 games, makers of 
Dwarf Fortress have earned over $7.2 million since launching on Steam. You know what? Um, Bay 12 Games, Tarn, uh, has, uh, Tarn and, uh, God, what's his brother's name? Adam and Tarn. Oh. Um, they have always done monthly reports. They say the money that's come in and all this sort of stuff. So it's crazy to just see the monthly report come up and it says $7 million. I mean, these are guys awesome. who were banking on this because they needed to get it out to pay for medical stuff. So it's like, these guys deserve everything. They've been working on this game Hell since 2006. Yeah. Uh, technically the second game slaves. This is the second game of the series slaves to our mock God of blood Two, chapter two dwarf fortress. Um, I just feel so good for them. Uh, it's just awesome. fantastic. Oh my um, God, I love that. They totally deserve that. I actually went and looked it up because Zach from save data had asked their original agreement with kit Fox was after the itch.io and steam cut. Uh, they got, 80 percent and kit fox got 20 percent so it's just like all around wow. great news for them i mean and kudos to kit fox uh for for publishing this and supporting them i think you're gonna see a lot more uh sort of hidden gems indie games that aren't published or that are more shareware like but the one example i could think of was like cataclysm dark days ahead is a mm -hmm. roguelike that's mm -hmm. very popular i could see someone coming in to one of those games be like, hey, we'll publish this for you because just the fan base is so ravenous. And they're such well-made games that um, right. that I think it really worked out. So kudos to them. Good job, Bay 12. I'm very happy for you. Um, yeah, let's meet Ian Gibson. Tell me about your yeah. mobile phone. Yeah. Uh, so EA came out with some cancellations this week. Some of them shocking, some of them shocking for other reasons um <laughs> three big ones number one apex legends mobile uh, i believe this game was released they've canceled it um this game already came out uh, the battle royale mobile space is actually pretty hot PUBG mobile is crazy big in asia and you know fortnite of course is always big on the phone uh apex legends mobile apparently it's just not taking off which is uh, honestly a little bit surprising because apex legends is still very popular as a uh, as a um, as a battle royale on consoles and PCs. Do you guys ever play any Apex Legends mobile or have any interest in it at all? No. <laughs> yeah, same. Because we're real gamers. Real gamers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I... honestly, that started as a joke, but the more I say it, the more I believe it. Real gamers don't play ports of console PC games on the phone. They yeah. play phone games. Like it's a yes. different. Yes. Yep. Different medium. Make games for that medium. Don't just well, port it. The only one that works is for that though is Vampire Survivors, which is a whole other discussion because that's, that's technically a port. Vampire Survivors based on a mobile game. There it's you true. go. It and all it feels like this... a flash game. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so oh, which we need you. more of. <laughs> so it's actually, so it's actually a browser game, which works, yes. and you can open a browser on a phone on and phone. a PC. All right, I'm a, uh, that's it. That's it. okay. Good. Got it. I should get a it phone. All works. It all works. <laughs> um, the other game that was canceled, this game had not been released yet, was Battlefield Mobile. Um, honestly, this one is kind of a no-brainer. Battlefield 2042, just an absolute shit heap of a release and a game. Um, and that series is is on death watch, basically. Um, so I could understand them trying to kill battlefield mobile especially if apex legends mobile is is not doing well but the one that i think we should talk about for a little bit is the one game that everybody has been clamoring about for years and years and years and it turns out they were making it and now it's been canceled uh uh this is based on a rumor i don't think this is actually confirmed but it's lots of uh, verifiable information out there they were working on a single player game in the titanfall apex oh. legends universe and they canceled it, folks. Can you fucking believe they were finally making a sequel to Titanfall 2 and they killed yeah. it? That's insane. The suits, man. They don't it, get it. It's man. gotta be, because it's like the, the fan reception for Titanfall 2. I, I've only played a little bit of it. I haven't even played the whole thing. And even there, you can just feel that it's like, the, they're, it's special. And it, like it, mm -hmm. it deserved to have a continuation, and especially with Respawn doing uh, the Jedi games, 
It feels yeah. like there should be some sort of they have good acclaim in the you know video game community, so it it, it is really surprising that they would just axe any Titanfall anything. Even yeah. Apex Legends, maybe, but like Titanfall specifically, that's the most surprising to me. Yeah. And I think um, there's part of me that is like the bad guy where I'm like, hey, maybe the game was shit and they canceled it because the game was shit and it wasn't working out. But they right. put out fucking Battlefield 2042 and that game was in a <laughs> terrible state. Right. When it when it hit open beta, it was in a terrible state <laughs> months ahead of the release and they knew the release version was basically the same and it was still in a terrible state. So I don't trust this company to judge games pre-release. Right. Th this is just, you know, I, I, I'm starting to think when you think about publishers, there's been a lot of news last year or so about how uh, Ubisoft is in a bad state. Um, yeah. You know, they've been delaying, their games have not been hitting. Now they're starting to feel the financial weight of that. I think EA is the next big publisher to start to feel that crunch because at least Activision has Call of Duty, right? And uh, at least they have, you know, uh, even though Blizzard has kind of waned, they're still making money with World of Warcraft, with Overwatch. You know, they got Diablo on the horizon, et cetera. Hearthstone, yeah, exactly. What does EA have? I mean, their, their tentpole is they lost FIFA. So their tentpole now is Madden? Yeah. I think that's I don't the think only they're... one I can think of. E EA can't live on that cash cow. They don't like make they, they, football manager, do they? No, I don't think so. I'm, I'll look that up right now. They, they don't have they don't have Medal of Honor. Yeah. They don't have no. Battlefield anymore. In, in terms of they're not going to make money off that guaranteed. Right. Uh, they don't have FIFA. Most of their other sports games are just kind of on life support in a way. I, I, I don't know. Dead Space did well for them at least. Oh, true. yeah, that's true. But but that's not that's not EA money though. You know, that's not enough to keep AA afloat. So I'm, no, totally, I'm, totally. I'm just trying to think recent win is at least. Yeah, that. what do they yeah. even have? Yeah. They've, like, they've, 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 Edge. they've got the Star Wars coming up, but still, they're not oh, in a I good guess state. That is EA. No, if they don't, if they don't turn things around in a year or two, I'm not saying they're going to be gone, but they're going to be the next Ubisoft where you're looking oh. at this publisher going. They have nothing. Right. Is Skate still part of EA, though? Because yeah. the well, that's having issues. <laughs> yeah, the latest really? the, <sighs> the latest one was somebody somebody found uh, free to play loot box stuff in it oh, in one no. of the betas. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Because I love those. I will games, say but, oh. they've been good. The one thing I'll give EA not give them because probably <laughs> didn't want to do it, but like the releases of like when they did Mirror's Edge and the original Dead Space and stuff like that, and they do like it takes two as an EA game. Like they at least yeah. promote those. So okay. like. They have stuff that works for them, but I feel like there's someone there that's fighting for all that stuff, and then they get pushed over all the time for like, oh no, we need Madden and we need Battlefield and right. stuff. Where yeah. it's like the other guys right. just like, please no, put these other games out. <laughs> um, but I don't, I, yeah. I, I don't, I don't know, I don't know that they have a big happy fan base because this year's Madden, I wasn't following it too closely, but it feels like this year's Madden more than any in recent history had the fans saying you fed us the same shit for now the fourth year in a row. Yeah. Yep. You know, yep. normally they're fine two or three years in a row, but they're literally like right. the same bugs that have been in the series for three years. You have not fixed apex legends fans. They're not happy. Well, because of stupid balance shit and everything. And apparently there's right. server issues. So they don't have a big, happy fan base right now around no. any of their properties. I mean, have they ever though too? Weren't they rated yeah. like the worst company in the world? Like multiple yeah. years in a row. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah, right. but back at the EA EA Sports, like people <laughs> love stuff back then. They made those True. sweet. They made five versions of the first Harry Potter game, so stuff was looking yeah. up. Oh, for that them. was EA. That's right. Oh my god. So they, they even had they even had when Battlefield came back for Battlefield One and Battlefield Five. A lot of people love those. Those sold well. That was, that was huge. Yeah. Oh, so, I think man. they just got mired oh, in yeah. the like micro transaction loot box. Every game is a uh, play it for your life game that yeah. Yeah. it just like it folded back on them. And I'm I'm hoping signs of the Dead Space remake and stuff like that doing well will push them back into a sort of, hey, let's try to balance yeah. this out now. Let's let's think right. on this um, because EA like if if 
Battlefield 2042 came out in two more years or three more years. And it, people were like, oh, I can't wait, can't wait. And it was good and at least stable. It would have been better than launching it bad and then yes. trying to fix it over time. So, right. 100%. 100%. Not everything yeah. can be a cyberpunk or, a you know, like they can't just do the the modular fixes and expect people to stay, especially for a game like that. Yeah, um, it doesn't. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. It's like cyberpunk. If cyberpunk had launched with zero glitches, people would have still enjoyed it. But because it, it like that game has been soured in my mouth, even though to some extent it is still a good game. Right. Um, it's enjoyable. It's a solid seven, I would say. Right. And I love solid sevens, uh, but the glitches and all that sort of stuff. Shut up! <laughs> the glitches and all that stuff uh, made it. Made it. Uh, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> Can't. Doesn't even finish the sentence. Uh, just trails off. Let's take a solid twelve, early. please. <laughs> um, <laughs> moving on here. Uh, just some quick hit news items. Uh, as far as cancellations, uh, also Rumbleverse is shutting down. Um, yeah. that is, is that, that's the one from Iron Galaxy, right? Yeah, that's the one from Iron Galaxy so, in partnership with Epic. I believe it was six months that it was Damn. up. And then, um, Knockout City was also shut down. Oh, Wait, damn. was it really? Yeah. I like that one a lot. Today. Damn. Oh, man. Because that one actually worked really well. Mm hmm. Yeah, I was that's surprised fun. by that one. The, so they're the going to shut down in June mechanic for that one i always remember oh, yeah. being like that is awesome like no yeah. other game has something like this so that sucks yeah <clears throat> it's just like they don't have the player bases for it and it's it's tough right. when so many of them are coming out like i mean if these had come out i still think people capitalizing on like fall guys and among us like they were good because mm -hmm. everyone was home everyone was right. wanting to play something right. new and fresh and I think it just took too long for some of this stuff to come out. And they were too samey. Mm. So you split those fan bases across multiple games who they were too niche, you know, niche, right. ni Nietzsche, 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 <laughs> Nietzsche. Yeah. Ni yeah. Perfect. Exactly. Um, and then finally, folks, uh, we haven't done this in a bit, but the wishlist spotlight game of the week game of the week uh, is one second front which is actually out. It was not out when I first put it on this list and is now out. Um, this is a tactical World War II turn-based strategy game. Uh, you can craft and share your own scenarios and maps and use your strategic prowess in 48 scenarios set in iconic locations. This seems like an ad read because I'm literally reading the text on the Steam page. Um, <laughs> I thought this looked really neat. It's got civilization, hex-based, memoir 44 vibes. Um, Micro Pros putting this out. Micro Pros, you may know as the huge software developer of the '90s. Uh, they're kind of back in a way where they're like supporting these little indie games and publishing them, and I think that's really neat. Um, yep. So normally the segment is the the wish light wish list spotlight where we ask you to come wish list a game on Steam because wish listing does really well. Uh, I still want to shout this out even though it came out. It's currently on sale, thirty bucks. Uh, if you like that um, type of tactical World War II game, just to be nice. just to be clear, wish listed anyways. You can still wish list it after it's out. Yes, and you'll totally, be notified totally, totally. When it when it goes on sale or just to support the developer, this game this game has like such a weird little cartoony look. But then you start looking at it and you're like, oh, this actually looks like a solid like old school World War II tactics hex game. So awesome. it's pretty cool yeah. looking. I um this kind of was born of on Twitter. I always see those like turn-based Thursdays and people host them and post their indie games and it's always wish list wish list. So we wanted to kind of like shout them out and make sure these uh people get heard. Um and I realized I should also tweet what our wish list uh pick was. So I will do that as well. Folks, it's 10 p.m. here on the East Coast. 7 p.m. on the West Coast. That's how math works. Um <laughs> Stu, it was an absolute pleasure oh having God. you on this podcast. It was such an honor to be here. Thank you so much for having me, you guys. Um, when I Play asked Racing you to be Lagoon. on this, sorry, yeah, Racing Lagoon. <laughs> when I asked you to be on this, you replied and said, "I would love to hang with the Subpixel gang sometimes." And I said, "That man was very quick at checking my Twitter bio to see what my YouTube thing was called." <laughs> <laughs> hey, there is no way he I'm knew that off hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um absolutely incredible uh 
where can people follow you on the internet? Uh, Twitter is probably the best place in the video game space at Stewie Reviewy. Uh, I also am on YouTube at Super Donk. I uh, like Super Donkey Kong. I oh, yeah. uh, oh. uh, post videos on there. That, that was my portfolio that got me into GameSpot. And I'm working on a hand. I'm hand animating, which I don't know why I did this to myself. A video all about the nostalgia of couch co-op. Uh, I saw ooh. that. It looks so good. That style looks great. Thank you. I'm. It's supposed to be like a like a ten year old scribbling in a notebook. So it, my artistic style is just exactly <laughs> at that level. So um, uh, check that out. It'll be out soon ish. Um, and then check out the channel for whatever else. And that's me. <laughs> awesome. That's fantastic. Well. I, Thank, yeah, again, thank you so much for coming on. You've been a fantastic guest. Oh, we get a lot of duds on here, like oh. Ian. Uh, so <laughs> it's kind of hard. No, I love all of our guests. Uh, let me hit the outro music here. Folks, thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, all two of you who watch... Oh, three viewers who watch this stream. Three, thank you. Sorry. Uh, up 30%, 150%. I don't know how percentages work. Uh, folks, you can find us at subpixelfilms.com. We'll bring you straight to our link tree where you can get our merch. You can go to our YouTube channel. You can do all sorts of things. Uh, so go and do that. I have been your host, Will Crosby, at Hunt270 on Twitter, Ian Gibson at Think Gibson on Twitter, and at Stewie Reviewy for Sue on the Twitter. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. We'll be back this weekend with some more Dwarf Boys. Super excited for that. I love Dwarf Fortress. Uh, there was some crazy stuff going on in our stream fortress. So uh, that's going to be a really good time. Uh, we got about nine seconds on this song before we get out of here. So thank you so much, everybody. And we will see you all this weekend. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.